In this video, I would like to start the topic of raising capital. What does it mean? Uh, it means it costs money to make money. So if a company wants additional money, let's say to invest into um, a new investment project, open a new location, uh, buy its competing firm, etc., etc., it would um, sell additional shares of stock or borrow money by selling corporate bonds. All of that is going to be done with the assistance of some uh, third party, some investment bank, and there would be some fees involved. So it would cost money for a firm to raise money that it needs. Uh, we will look at what venture capital means, what investment bank's role um, is, and what IPO stands for. And... Um, what it means and what happens under an IPO. Uh, you can think of a firm life having three important stages, an early stage, a later stage, and an even later stage. What happens during the early stage? It, uh, if it needs money, it raises it very often, or what's becoming more um, popular these days, through venture capital. Uh, venture capital means you basically find private investors who trust your business idea and are willing to um, give you uh, some money to get you started. At a later stage, um, a firm will need potentially even more money and it would um, be pretty much impossible to get, say, millions of dollars from some private investor. And so at a later stage, a firm would... Uh, go public, um, what is called initial public offering. It would basically sell its um, business to investors all over the world by selling shares of stock for the very first time. And that would bring um, additional funds for, for, the, for the managers. Of course, it can also raise additional money by taking a loan. At an even later stage, it again can take a loan or add a, um, issue additional shares of stock, which is known as seasoned equity offerings, SEO. And uh, for any sort of issue of uh, shares of stock or corporate bonds, if that's the method uh, for borrowing money, uh, for any of these processes, a firm would be using um, an intermediary between the firm and the investors buying those financial securities called investment banks uh, that would be assisting the firm um, in this process. Let's start with venture capital. Venture capital is basically private fina financing for startup companies, also known as ventures. Um, good question. Why would there be a need for venture capital investment? Why wouldn't a startup company, you know, two guys starting a business together, why wouldn't they just go to a bank and ask for half a million dollars? Well, the answer is obvious. The bank would say no. Um, how would the bank trust, you know, these business partners that they would not just waste the bank's money? It's a very risky business, right? Potentially a very risky business, some new idea, something that nobody has done before. And because of its risk, the bank uh, would just say, sorry, we cannot do that. And the only way to raise money is to have somebody who trusts your idea, believes it will be profitable, understands your idea and your plans, and would be willing to help you financially. Um, individual venture capital investors are also known as angels, but there are actually more organized institutions, venture capital firms that work with um, larger amounts of money that they provide for startups. And uh, venture capital firms may get their money from a whole bunch of different um, institutions like companies, individuals, insurance companies, and so on. Who are these two young guys? Of course, we all know them. How can we not know Google? Well, you can Google for Google's history and find out everything about um, 
Sergey Brin and Larry Page, who are on this photo. If you Google for Google, then you will see that they actually went through all those different stages of a firm's life that we are talking about. In 1998, they wrote up a business plan. They put their PhD degrees on hold. That's where they met at um, Stanford University. And they went looking for an angel investor. Um, and the story goes, their first visit was with a friend of a faculty member. Andy Bechtelsheim, Bechtelsheim, one of the founders of Sun Microsystems, was used to taking the long view. One look at their demo, and he knew Google had potential, a lot of potential. But though his interest had been piqued, he was pressed for time. As Sergey tells it, we met him very early one morning on the porch of a Stanford faculty member's home in Palo Alto. We gave him a quick demo. He had to run off somewhere, so he said, instead of us discussing all the details, why don't I just write you a check? It was made out to Google Incorporated, and it was for $100,000. So that's how it all started. And then just a year later, 1999, June 1999, um, Google wanted to raise $25 million. That's a lot of money, right? One year later, they need that much more. Clearly, no private individual may be willing to risk with um, such a high investment into their business. And so, as the story goes, uh, they went to look for funding uh, from venture capital firms in Silicon Valley. And then, just five years later, in 2004, uh, this is not on my slide, but just five years after that, they um, transitioned to the what I called an even later stage of a company's life, uh, where a company company goes public. So it sh it sells shares of stock for the very first time. Investors all over the world may be interested in buying those. That's called IPO, initial public offering. And at that time, Google was planning to raise about $4 billion. Uh, there are some problems with venture capital. First, it's not like any startup can rely on this kind of money. So it's very limited funds. You need to rely on a network, uh, an informal network, on lawyers that you know, friends that you know, that can... Uh, connect you, uh, get in, you in touch with um, venture capital investors. The second problem is that it's actually expensive. It's not like they give you money and that's it. They may want something in return, like participate in your decisions, um, you know, demanding seats on the board of directors and so on. How should a startup company choose a venture capitalist? Well, it's good to um, look for, you know, financially stable or strong venture capitalist. Somebody who might be um, helpful at a later um, stage of your company's life. Second, because uh, the venture capitalist may be heavily involved in your startup company's business, you want to be um, looking for somebody whose management style is compatible with your own. Third, it's good to obtain and check references. Uh, you want to know that the venture capital, uh, capitalist has been successful in the past um, um, with similar startup companies. Number four, it's important if uh, it's very valuable, if a venture capitalist has uh, good connections, if he can help you find important customers or important suppliers. Um, so in other words, if he is well connected and can help you with uh, contacts, new contacts. Then the last bullet point says, what is the exit strategy? This means when the time comes to 
thank the venture capitalist for all the financial help he has provided and say goodbye. How will that all happen? How would um, uh, the venture capital capitalist cash out of the business when the time comes? Would he get some percentage of the company's um, value or become one of the stockholders or what is going to happen? So that's up to the negotiation between the uh, startup uh, partners and the venture capitalists.